Welcome back to MVM. This is another Kickstarter preview, and today we're going to be looking at Papillon from Colossal Games. Two to four players, and this is tiling and area control. Yeah, this is a game about building a garden in front of you and then bringing in your butterflies to populate the flowers that grow in the garden. So this is a multi-step process, and you will see the game laid out here in front of us. It is a game already in progress. Everything you see here um, comes with the Kickstarter. And again, uh, as we always say, this is a prototype. So everything you see here is not exactly final. The way that these flowers look in the final version of the game, it might be a little bit different, but this is gonna be good enough for you to understand how the game is played. It comes with a variety of these different flowers that actually slot together to stand up. They're in a variety of different colors and they come with different planters. These planters are randomly assigned to the flowers at the start of the game. And if you notice, there are different values of points on each one of these um, pots. These flowers are gonna be worth different amount of points every game, and at the end of the game, the top three people who have the most butterflies on that flower are going to score points. So it is kind of an area control game as well as being uh, a tile building, garden building style game. Right, and there are, what was this, eight rounds in the game, and you're gonna be tracking that throughout the game with these gnome tokens, which on the back are gonna have caterpillars. Caterpillars are your economy in the game for choosing which place that you're going to be in in order to place your butterflies on these different flowers, as well as drafting the tiles. Yeah, you're gonna start with a certain number of caterpillars. The first player starts with least amount, and then you, you go up in ascending value so that everyone has some to start the game. And like Kira just said, it is the currency that you're going to be using in the game. You're gonna use this currency primarily to bet on turn order, which is the most important thing that happens. So when you start a new round, you're going to refill this garden with tiles drawn randomly from this bag. There are a ton of tiles in here, more than you'll actually use in a game, so you're not always guaranteed to see every tile that you want to come out. So you fill in these little spots, flip over a gnome to determine that round's point value. So after this is all set up and everybody gets a chance to see what the layout is, you get to bid how many caterpillars you want to spend to go first. You'll notice our players are, for the first round, determined in a random order, but in future subsequent turns, you're going to bid in, in the turn order you went the previous round. So in this instance, the white player would bid first, and they have an option of bidding anywhere from zero to five caterpillars. If they bid five caterpillars, they are guaranteed to go first. However, they can bid zero, which will drop them down to one of these slots and actually give you caterpillars. The first person to do that gets one, two, three, and then four. So theoretically, everyone could go to the zero spot, but you're gonna be playing and bidding again in the same order. So ev everybody bids, everybody slides down, and then we have a new turn order for that round. Once the bidding is complete and you move over as Ryan said, then you're going to draft the tiles. You're either gonna draft a row or a column of tiles. And if you draft this particular row or column, you're also going to get that gnome token. You'll see that there's also caterpillars on some of these uh, tiles. When you draft that tile, you are going to gain that caterpillar into your, to your pool. Yeah, and when you do it, you just simply stack up all the tiles you get in that column or row and bring them in front of you. If you got the gnome, you bring that in front of you as well, take the caterpillars. If you're in a situation where you're only going to be able to draft one tile, for instance, if you're stuck with this one, you also get to draw a tile from the bag. So you're, you're going to get from two to four tiles, so nobody's gonna to fall too far behind by getting only one tile every turn. And once you draft your tiles, and let's say I went ahead and took this, you're going to immediately start putting those on your board however they're going to fit. And it's really important how they fit on your board. They have to match up on either side, and this is where some of the strategy comes into this, what I would call probably a, a gateway plus mm -hmm. game. Uh, very easy to learn, of course, but the strategy, and you'll see here, is what starts to get you, because you're drafting to see what you can build. You wanna build bigger patches, but if you don't close them, they're not worth any points. And in order to place butterflies on the different scoring stand-up flowers you see laid out here, we need to be closing patches of flowers. And here you'll see we've closed a patch of red, which will allow me then to place this butterfly on one of the two red flowers out here. Because it is three or more, I also get a bonus tile, and we can talk more about that in a moment. So you're gonna be sitting here thinking, okay, I need to be able to line this up, but I don't have a good place to put a yellow and a red that are gonna match up because this would mean um, I'd have to have a empty field here and I don't, so I can't put that there. So I'm stuck putting mm -hmm. it here against this other empty field. And placing those tiles is very strategic in 
where you're going, how many flowers you're going to get uh, your butterflies onto. And specifically, if you have a patch of three or more, as I mentioned earlier, you're going to get to this bonus tile, which allows you to place an additional butterfly on that flower yeah. immediately. Yeah, when you close off a patch of flowers, and like here said, you have to match up the sides, but when you close it, you simply take a butterfly from your supply, put it on that flower, and then in turn order, we're going to place them which means everyone takes the butterfly that they earned that turn, looks at the color. So for example, I took a red flower patch. I get to take this butterfly and attach it onto a red flower. And these uh, little butterflies are really neat. You'll see they're on little clips. This is the uh, prototype, but it is mm -hmm. the plan for the final production of the game for these to be on clips. So you'll actually, you're actually seeing the mechanism as it'll be played. Yeah, and once everyone has placed all their butterflies, you look at what's left, you remove all the tiles that were not drawn, you replace the gnome with a new gnome. Which is also your round tracker. Yep, and you continue to do that with everyone taking tiles, building out their tableau, closing off these different patches of flowers and trying to get those caterpillars, which like I said, are important to bid in turn order. After the eighth round of doing that, you're going to score the game. And when you score, you're gonna score, everything scoring happens at the end of the game. So we're going to score whoever has the uh, area control of the individual flower, and that goes by the scoring you see on the planters here. Again, there are three different scores for first, second, and third place as far as area on the flower. Mm -hmm. And each flower is different. These are randomly assigned at the beginning of the game. Yeah, and each flower can only hold nine butterflies during the game. So you can kind of plan ahead. You know you're going to have majority of a butterfly if you have five butterflies on it, but you are limited in your supply. You don't have it. You can't just go around claiming every butterfly. You're going to have to leave some of these up to chance. But you can take a butterfly from one flower mm -hmm. and move it to another if you do find yourself with an opportunity that you'd like to move it to. But that does take you off that other flower and the, and the area control for that flower. Yeah. After you score all of the flowers, you're going to look at how many caterpillars you have left. You're going to get rewarded for having saved these caterpillars. One victory point for every caterpillar left in front of you. Next, you're going to look at all your tiles that have butterflies on them and score any of them that are in closed patches or closed fields. Yeah, just like when you're closing up those flowers by matching different flower types together, you can close a field. And that's the really the only thing it does. It gets you points at the end of the game. There are some different variants to the game that play with that field mechanic in certain ways, but when you're sitting down to play the game the first time, you're just scoring the number of butterflies. Lastly, you're gonna look at your completed garden you're gonna look at your closed flower patches, which you'll have been doing this during the game, closing off these flower patches. You look at your two highest, and you're gonna get points for every tile that belongs to those flower patches. So you're gonna get rewarded. If you chose two colors and really focused on building out those two colors, you might not have as many butterflies out, but you're gonna get a ton of points at the end of the game. So you'll add up all the points from all those different things, and that'll be uh, determine who the winner is. If you find yourself with a tie, it'll be whoever has the most gnome tokens. That is Papillon from Colossal Games coming to Kickstarter on April 4th. Keep an eye out for it. We'll add the link in our bio once it's live. And as always, please like, subscribe, share, and follow us on all social media. And we will see you next time.